And we are live. Hello, welcome to the Podcasters Lounge. All zero of you, thank you for being here. <laughs> this is just, we love this. Uh, anyway, we're just going to hang out for about 60 to 90 minutes and have some fun. My name is Chris Curran. Uh, Ken and Cody are here with me. We're going to introduce ourselves in a minute, but uh, it's, it's both of your guys' first time in the lounge, so uh, how does that feel? <laughs> Quite an honor. It's the, the most, the highest honor that could, in front of all these zero people here, um, yeah. just couldn't be more proud. <laughs> it's a big crowd. It's a round crowd. <laughs> How you feeling, Ken? Ken, you're from Ireland. Top of the morning to you. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah baby. Yeah. I know. We missed, we missed St. Patrick's Day by a week, I think, right? Yeah, you probably did. Yeah, there was tons and tons of Shawnees all over the place, but there can keep you all, you know, Shawnees from Boston, as we like to say. Yeah, yeah, it's great being here. Thanks very much for inviting me. Yeah, so but so if you're watching, especially the replay, uh, we're just going to talk about a bunch of different topics, but also, uh, if you want to comment, ooh, if you want to comment, we you know you can ask questions, and obviously we'll answer. We're going to talk about a lot of different news topics. We're going to be all over the place. This isn't a formal thing. This is just a Friday cool hangout. But we're all podcasters, and we all want to do the best we can in our lives and our podcasts. So this is all very uh, constructive. Cody, you and I actually just met at Podcast Movement Evolutions right. a couple weeks ago. Yep, now, in person, so. which is rare nowadays with how virtual everything is. Like It's odd for me to like actually meet somebody first in person. Yeah, that was really cool. Um, it was, yeah. Yeah, that was a pretty pretty cool event just by the, you know, if you weren't there. Uh, it's a smaller event than the bigger podcast movement event. And also, it's a lot more industry people and corporate people. I very much got that vibe, too, because I went to Evolutions last year in... Uh, in LA and I also felt the same way because my fr I've been to three total first one was Nashville uh Bre the regular podcast movement in Nashville and that that difference I very much felt it was very corporate if if that's you know if you know what I mean by that yeah. um so yeah I, I agree with that yeah and th and that makes sense that they would I mean obviously they organize it that way on purpose right evolutions is more for the industry that's why they yeah. keep it closer to LA I believe that's and then the bigger well. podcast movement is open to everybody. And all right, we have two viewers here. I, I just I'm on top Whoa. of the world here. <laughs> Holy cow. I mean, this is I mean, we're done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. That's Barry's <laughs> voice. I got some sound clips here for today. Now, are you sure that's not you in another window? Because I've made that mistake before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, you know, no, I'm on the YouTube channel, but I haven't clicked on the video. Oh, there you go. There you in, go. in the other browser. Well, yeah. congratulations to both of you. Hi. So, so let's do quick introductions. And I had, I actually had an idea, a cool idea for introductions, but it might not be, it might not be such a great idea since there's only three of us on the screen and only two people watching. You know how introductions are usually really boring, and it's like, oh, here we go. I, you know, now I got to listen to this guy's whole background and whatever. So I thought we should do quick introductions, like try to make it 10 or 15 seconds, and then the viewers can judge us and judge who gave the best introduction and not and, and, and based on performance, <laughs> based on content, style, style points, landing, right, landing, <laughs> <laughs> landing. All right. So I think we can do it. All right. Who anyway, goes first? We'll, we'll we'll try it. I mean, <laughs> our, you know, who's our the, audience. Who's the uh, who's the guy in the red shirt? Come on, who goes first? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'll go first. It's my it's my stupid idea. I'll go first and make a fool of myself first. Um. All right. You ready? By the way, this is Barry's voice. This is the sound clips I use on my podcast. Um, Barry, I, I always pretend that he's here, but he really is here. Barry, you're uh. You're happy to be on the in the podcasters lounge live stream today, right, Barry? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He's 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 got a nice voice. And Barry, why is there only one person watching us right now? Ooh. That's a mystery. Uh, I mean, <laughs> and think about all everyone that's missing out on this this top level banter right now. Oh, forget it. 
I'm telling you. All right, I'll do my intro real quick. <laughs> okay. Let's go. I'm Chris Curran. I run Podcast Engineering School, and I teach all kinds of people how to produce podcasts at a professional level so you can go out there, make a lot of money, work from home, and love life. Thank you. <laughs> he, he's really going for the he's really going for his points. <laughs> he's not holding back at all there. That was Yeah. Yeah. Who's next? Am I going next? It's a mess. It's a mess. <laughs> uh, I can right, go next. Go, if like, you want. Who? Oh, can, you go next. If you oh, if you yeah. want alphabetically, we can go alphabetically. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> so first thing, I apologize. I'm gonna be doing that a lot. I was getting over this nasty, nasty cold. Um, I just had one too. Yeah, it's the worst. I think it might have been podcast movement, to be honest. I always get sick after those things. <laughs> Interesting, um, and I, and again to preface my introduction, I'm so sorry if you hear there's like repair people here. No clue they were coming until like literally as I was sitting down. So you hear that? Ooh, yeah, I'll yeah. try to mute when I can. But it's big banging <laughs> on the walls and stuff. So, okay. um, I'm Cody Crab. I am a podcast producer, manager, um, consultant, especially recently. Um, and same as Chris, I have a YouTube channel where I talk about Descript. And I talk about just editing in general and the industry and how people can get into it. I also just have a brand new podcast that I just started called the Podcast Producers Survival Handbook. Uh, we just launched uh, last week. We're going to have a couple episodes live here in the next few weeks. Uh, same thing, sort of uh, talking about industry stuff, how to make a career out of podcast production and uh, helping people start their own podcasts. So happy to be here. Very good. Very, very good. Very good. Oh, then he okay, I'm next. Us. Then he trolled us. You moved your lips yeah. without saying anything, he right? did. I saw that. Yeah. Mm, very strange. Well, I, I think I'm delayed. Producers. I think I'm delayed somehow. I don't oh, really you're know. You're dead. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're gone. <laughs> yeah, the, it's not synced up anymore. What the heck? It, it, it'll All right. Pop back I'll get to the bottom of this while Ken's doing his introduction. Yeah, it'll probably settle okay. down. Yeah. Yeah. Like us. <laughs> Okay, right, me next. Okay, my name is Ken Sweeney. Um, I am based in Ireland. I'm an Irish podcaster. I've been podcasting for five years and I've been teaching no one because I like to keep it all to myself. Um, I have a podcast called The Comfortable Spot, which is a one-on-one -on -one series of interviews with very fascinating people from all around the world. And I do a crazy podcast with my daughter, 10-year-old Lydia. We review kids' books and it's never simple. But uh, that's me in a nutshell, really. In an Irish nutshell. And yeah. check this out. I forgot I could share. See, here's Ooh, Ken's that podcast. Looks great. Yeah, I don't own that chair, by the way. I don't own that sofa. And here's Cody's website, Ooh, by the way. That's very Ooh. clever. Yeah. Co wow. cr uh, sorry, crab.media. Yeah, crab.media. And here's media. this is my school here, but uh, very sleek. Yeah. Anyway, so well, we got a lot of topics to talk about. Cody, you said. Before we went live, I mentioned something about YouTube podcasts. Ooh, the big news. So let's talk about YouTube podcasts. Um, why don't you, you want to start us off, Cody? Yes, your... because I think based on how you brought this up, I feel like you are very salty that this exists and that you're kind of like, you know, why is this a thing kind of thing? Am I, am I reading the room right on that? No, no, no. I, I, I'm, I'm happy it's a thing. I just think the way that they're implementing it is is oh interesting nonsensical interesting. and it, it's like every and every well i shouldn't i don't know everything that google has done in podcasts but whatever they've done it never takes off they don't do it right remember yeah. google podcasts google play music was their first try and that was weird and they just yeah then they yeah. made google podcasts they didn't do that right now they're doing this it doesn't seem like they're doing it right so well, i'm not salty yeah. i'm just saying what and, and I think one of the reasons why is a lot of these big companies, of course, Google, you know, they're just they're so huge and they're the authority on everything. Like, I, I think in the industry, people think they know what podcasting is and how it works. And they don't and they don't consult actual podcast companies and podcasters. Yeah. They just decide something in a boardroom, roll it out and it's garbage. So I know what you mean. I think in my ideal my ideal version of this would be you can upload a like a video podcast to YouTube or even an audio one and it generates an RSS feed. That would be my dream scenario and it shows up on Google Podcasts in the same way that you as like as it as your YouTube channel basically on Google Podcasts. That's my dream scenario of this. That's not how they did it. Um, 
basically the all all they really did was you can be like, hey, this playlist is is uh is a podcast playlist, and that's that's pretty much it as far as right. I understand it, right? So yeah, I I do agree with you that like it's a little weird the way they handled it. Like they at least could have made it so you can. I don't know. Just it's it seems odd the way they did it, but I do. I am glad that it exists because I have a lot of my. So I have clients that have video, and I have clients that have audio, mm-hmm. but I have this kind of third weird middle ground where it's like not really fully either thing. Like I, I call it video podcast because it's literally just what we're doing right now, like what mm-hmm. people watching right now. I call it a video podcast because it's like there's a video component, but it's not necessary at all. It's just the audio is is all you really need. So I kind of differentiate those with my clients actually, is I say video is one thing, audio is one thing, video podcasting is a completely different thing, especially cause like you can have so many different versions of this. You could have the switching camera angles, you can have people in the same room, you know, there's, so I think it's, it, it, it is good that I think that they're making a distinction cause I don't think they're the same as a YouTube video, but I agree the way they handled it was a little strange at least, at best with strange. Yeah. I don't and think Ken, they I actually have your a... thoughts. Hold yeah, on I mean, one second, Ken. Yeah. Ed Sullivan's here. Jason Bryant is here. What's up, fellas? Yeah, Jason. Jason, I wanted to talk to you. My my nephew is a wrestler, dude. Like he's I think he's 14 years old now, and he's actually, you know, taking scalps on a regular basis. Anyway, and Ed Sullivan's here, graduate of podcast engineering school. Ed says what they've implemented so far is useless to me. Okay. Yeah, I, I I get the I get the vibe because like again, what would be really useful to me is if you could do things like generate some kind of feed from it. If you could have some, or even if they just took Google Podcasts and just slurped it right onto the side of YouTube somehow, you know, and you could just do everything inside YouTube. That would be that would be what we that what they should have done because they already have a podcast platform. Like it's so weird that they just they did it that way. Yeah, I agree. I think it's just a case of just doing it for the sake of it, you know, because um, they, they, they're not quite sure how to do it. I think they look a little bit lost when they put together the plan. But as you said there, um, Chris, that seems to be a problem with Google. They seem to come up with these ideas and they never follow through. They never work with it. They say it doesn't work after a while and then it just quietly fades away into the distance. And before you know it, when you click on that app that used to be there, it's not there anymore. And I think that's the problem here. They just don't know. It's like what you said there, Cody. They're not—they're not coming to people who know what to do with it, and they're not yeah. saying to them. They're not doing a Microsoft. They're not buying the people out. You know, they need to buy a few people. They need to say, "Okay, that yeah. dude's know what he's talking about. Let's get him in here for six months and see how he does it." Have and, you heard you know, of? Uh, have you heard of the ad? The website killedbygoogle.com? Yes, that's it. That's it's exactly literally just a list about. of all of the yeah. things, all the services and apps that they've like yeah. sunset so they, over the years. Like, there are like wanna... thousands. There are yeah. so many, and it's it's like a meme at this point. How many? Yeah, I just don't think they do. have. I don't think they really care. I think they just want to have some kind of. Um, yeah, step into the market and leave it at that, you know, because the yep. big players, the likes of Spotify and all and, and Apple. I mean, like when I started up my podcast last year, I mean, you know, the 50, it was a 50 50 flow between pod, yeah, Spotify and Apple. Now it's like 70, 70 20. Mm. And the rest, the other 10 is all the other Mickey Mouse um, platforms that people use every now and again, you yeah. know, but it's 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 now 70% Apple. So, like, what, what am I going to do with that? I'm going to love Apple, I'm going to promote it all the time. Yeah. Google Podcasts is, doesn't even figure on my podcast. That's endemic, by the way. Here's a, something I can bring to the table. That's endemic for Europe. I don't know what it's like in the States or elsewhere. But in Europe, mm. Apple podcast rule. Spotify, music, not podcasting. Apple, podcast, podcast, podcasts. So all anybody I know who uses it, you know, who has a podcast, they concentrate on Apple. It's got easy integration. Once you sign up and you get all the L analytics and all, it's easy to follow. And you get more followers as well. So I, I don't think you two heard is that. Suit. I've heard that as well for for Europe. I, I believe I, I didn't attend very many sessions at Podcast Movement, but I did attend one mm-hmm. um, by the uh, the podcast news guy. What's his name? Do you remember, Chris? Um, oh, James Cridlin. James Cridlin. Yeah, yeah. Which, by the way, I was just bringing this up. By the way, um, sorry. No, you're good. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Th- cool. This is a Pod News article about. Gotcha. YouTube podcast. Yeah. So he was actually mentioning that Spotify has like a crazy share in the US. Like I, I was way higher than I thought. Like what? Something like 40%, Chris? Mm. Do you remember? I don't know the percentage, but it's, yeah. It was higher than I, it was higher than definitely than what you just said, Ken. So I think that might be a US thing. 
Um, but it, but it was very, I was like surprised to hear that they were, um, they were doing that well. It makes sense though. Like every, everyone that I know pretty much uses Spotify for music. So yeah. like if you already have a music app that has the podcasts right there, I'm, to me, they're separate. Like I don't use them the, the same way. Like to me, podcasts and music, you don't listen to them the same way. So like, it makes more sense to me to have a separate app for that. But like a lot of people just don't want to worry about that. Like you know, they just want one app, just get it all in there, and it's that's it. So. Yeah, I think it has something to do though with the amount of people who buy iPhones here in Europe. You know, mm. iPhones are very trendy. Android phones are considered like kind of robust. You know, your everyday work phone. But if you're on a date, if you're out on the town, or you're flashing your new car, you have to have an iPhone to go with it. So I think what's happening is people are kind of getting more access to iPhones. Are becoming cheaper and cheaper. So they're using the the platforms that come with that. So if they're going to listen, also. The other thing is my podcast, for example, and I know an awful lot of people as well have got the same stats. Over 40s are big listeners to podcasting here in Europe. Under 40s, mm. not so much. So, Interesting. you know, my podcast like would be 40 to 50 would be around 80%. Now, it's a little bit geared towards that. It's a one-on-one -on -one conversation thing. So I'm not surprised by that. But that also has something probably to do with the, the iPhone as well. And that the iPhone, a lot older people can afford iPhones and all the stuff that comes with it. Whereas younger people may be getting one inherited from their parents and they're using it, as you say, for TikTok or Spotify music. But I think it's it adds up. You know, this it's definitely there's a, Apple is a serious player here in Europe. So I don't know where YouTube can come in with this. I think they're arriving really late to the game. You know, it's like saying, hey, we've got a Coca-Cola. And, you know, Pepsi have been around for 50 years. You know, Coca-Cola, it's virgin cola. You know, that, that's what it is. So, so yeah, the that's one, my The one thing I will say that is that plays in their favor a little bit is mm. it, everybody uses it. Like, that it is the platform. Like, I would say it's probably the number one social network, honestly. Um, like, whose who's mom, like, whose grandma can't figure out how to watch a YouTube video? You know what I mean? So, like, yeah. being that accessible it, on every device, too, is, like... I don't think uh, Apple doesn't quite have that reach because if you have an Android phone, like, mm. you know what I mean? Like, or, and Spotify is like, it's, you can listen to podcasts, but you might not download that unless you have a paid account with it. So anyway, right. I'm, th that's all I'm saying is like, there is this opportunity because they have this reach deep, deep. It's, it's like pre-installed on every phone, sure. you know? So that, that may be the only thing they have in their favor. So I think if they can kind of listen to some feedback, maybe implement some changes, they are pretty quick to make some changes sometimes. Um, if it's so. just a question about it if you have if you're using it can you like can you let your phone switch off like the way you can with a podcast i have youtube you have premium no no uh, uh see, not trying to flex here but i do have killer YouTube then. that's the killer so i don't because know because so many people listen to podcasts at night so you know they yeah. want to be able to put their headphones on right just get into bed put the podcast there, put the phone whatever beside the table and go to sleep if you can't yeah. you can leave it open on youtube it's a loser yeah, you know and that for me. That's that's one thing that they need to do. They need to make it much more user friendly, you know, for non premium users. It, it, you know, premium's not always a great thing when you're what trying to break it? into the market. Ask Ryan. Yeah, no, you're right. You know? No, yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I had a couple thoughts. One is my first thought when we were talking about why did why is YouTube implementing this so badly? And I think I can. I have one guess that's probably most definitely correct because there's no money in it. Mm. Good point. They don't point. care. Why do they even freaking care what happens yeah. about podcasts? There's no money in it. And the other thing, and the other reason I think they're probably doing it is because you, you know how we all, like podcasters who've been podcasting for a while, we we all know how the term podcast has been uh, butchered, butchered, <laughs> mutilated. There's yeah. a B word there, which I'm not going to yeah. say. Yeah. Look. No, most people don't even know what a podcast is. They don't know that they don't know what an RSS feed is. They don't know the difference between a podcast and a YouTube uh -huh. channel. And yeah. so they just end up calling everything a podcast. And now people start YouTube channels and they're like, oh, I started a new podcast. Mm. That gets and it's like, skin. see, but isn't that the point, though? Like they're they're not looking at us. They're looking at everyone else that doesn't yeah. really use these. So they're like, oh, you know, you're much more likely to use a YouTube channel. Th those people that yeah. you're mentioning yes. are like my, much more likely to watch a YouTube video. And, than to and on the topic there, the other thing as well to remember is that um, we can probably, I think I raised this as one of the points we could possibly discuss is that you've got kids involved with YouTube and that is like a gold mine for them. Whereas with podcasting, it's an it's a, it's, a, it's 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 not something kids can just get instantly into, but they just put a ring up, put on a you know a phone, turn it on to record, and the, hey hey they've got a YouTube channel, 
And if they're, you know, 20, is it like the 20 year olds or the 10 year olds? That's the accessibility of YouTube, I think. Yeah. So they're getting a wider audience that they wouldn't get with podcasters. So maybe, maybe YouTube is doing this for those younger people who mm. think a podcast is, oh, I just make a video yeah. every couple of days and I have mm. a podcast. I would, Definitely. I would somewhat agree with that because I think they're just going toward the people that are like, like the whole RSS feed thing. Like, imagine if. Right. They've got the ability to do that with Google Podcasts. Imagine they integrate the two. And this is just a little too early. Imagine mm. they just integrate both of them together. You upload your YouTube, you, your your thing to YouTube. It is the hosting platform. It yeah. does export an audio feed like that would be a really great scenario, you know. So maybe they just did this early. They just released these features early. And that's what they're actually going for. Because I mean, so that you, that's so a mean merge. So they're going to merge Google Podcasts with YouTube. It, they've done weirder, stupider things yes. than that. So, I mean, I, I, could, I wouldn't blame them. It's not going to make any impact on my stats, that's for sure. <laughs> so you, <laughs> so you know, see what I mean? Like, like they've got this yeah. power and all this already yeah. built out behind the scenes. So, like, yeah. I don't see why they couldn't do that. And, and I mean, it would be very easy for them to just kind of, even if it was just behind the scenes, May, yeah. play well together. And you just upload a thing to your YouTube channel that creates your feed. I mean, they, it's yeah. a free hosting platform. I mean, yeah, I know it's, lots it's, of people. It's really that would use only that. a patch, isn't it? Really, you, I mean, you, you for now, have to, yeah, yeah, you wouldn't have to rebuild the system. You know, it's it's like a, a, a merge would be just a couple of patches that they could just. Work I mean, on imagine if you months. could just imagine if you could upload audio only to YouTube. Yeah, that would be great. Do you that, see what that'd I mean? Be, be like the only that... interest I would have for YouTube. Yeah, I mean, look at me. Would I be? Would you want to be watching me every week on <laughs> <in> a <the> podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I'd have to have some amazing guests. <laughs> keep the feed on them. Keep the feed on them. You know, so get a, get a yeah. gif gif playing of like a, a puppy or something in the corner to get people exactly. keep watching. Yeah, I want to mention something about James James's little article here that uh, I believe because I saw a, a tweet before this came out where where James, you know, look Pod News. It, that's the premier news site for podcasting, right? Yeah, it has become time. that. It's undeniable. And James is great at what he does and everything, right? But I think he reached out to YouTube, and of course they just ignored him like they ignore everyone, apparently. And so he, like, in his tweet, he's like, well, I'd like to write an article, but I don't even know what the heck they're doing or <laughs> why or what it means. Yeah. And, and so you could tell, so it also right what you could see on the screen here, you can tell that there's some snark in there he says in a tweet youtube has announced that podcasts are a go we think this means that <laughs> podcast tools are now available on youtube studio for all <laughs> it's like yeah because they just don't they don't try that hard to like make everything super accessible because they're so big they just don't have to you know yeah who cares yeah i, th I think it's also got something to do with um you know, as you said, the market, like, for example, I have a YouTube channel for my podcast, but all I put up there is the actual, the ads for the forthcoming episode. So it's mm. a minute long. It's got an image of the actual guest and that's it. Whereas for Lydia's podcast, I think that that's something we should definitely explore, uh, you know, because we, we, we do a podcast only. We don't do any videos. And I'll be kind of careful to do that because she's only 10. But now that she's getting a little bit older, I'm kind of thinking, you know, she can do add-on stuff like that. So, Kobe, that's where it comes in, you know, where you're kind of, it's becoming a Frankenstein version of the podcast. Right, yeah. You know, <laughs> and that's that's the thing, you know. So the tooling would be interesting six months from now to see how that works. So that yeah, we could agreed. probably do, we could probably do a recording of the actual podcast. But can we edit the video that would be exactly the same as the podcast? That's what I was saying to you. And that could end up on Google Podcasts, if you know what I mean, as well. Yeah, exactly. As being on, Google, on YouTube. That would be handy. You know, that would be very, yeah. very handy then. Agreed. You know, to get a bit more philosophical, something I think about from time to time, when, when, when a certain system or a certain, go you know, or, you know or, or government works a certain way or, you know, things are put in place and we just live with that, like like Google is Google, YouTube is YouTube. They're there. That's it. You can't. And so, in a way, that's very good because they're good services that you can use. Same thing with governments, right? They're set up and they're good for a while. But whenever you want to make a change, it's so hard to make a change because of the because you're, what you're trying to do instead of creating something brand new with the new information we have, the new techn technology available, instead of actually creating something brand new that is 
literally 100 times better than everything that came before it. Instead of doing that, what we're forced to do because of business and commerce is we have to take this old thing and try to Frankenstein stuff and make right. it into something that's good. And we all suffer because of that. And I'm not, but that's natural. I'm not saying it's not natural. I'm just, that's just an observation. What do you guys think? Uh, I think you're, you're poking some, yeah, some holes there. Because if you look at, say, the car industry, like now the new thing is electric cars. But electric cars have been around for 150 years anyway. They were, they were around before the internal combustion engine. But as you say, the machine that is the motor industry across the world, regardless of where it comes from, whether it be Chrysler in the United States, a Hyundai in, uh, in, in Korea, the bottom line is that they don't like change because change is not good for them because it requires them to take a chance that corporate industry can't do that doesn't do. It's by very nature, it's conservative. So what you need is you need innovators. Those innovators are now... Some of them are the conservatives, you know, Bill Gates, for example. So what you need, you need the innovators to keep coming along. I think that's where we're going to find that, Chris. I don't think we're ever going to find innovation from Google. In fact, I think most young people think it's all a load of bull. You know, they don't <laughs> like Google. They don't like Facebook. They're looking for the next big thing that's coming from somewhere. And, it, you know, it's TikTok or whatever. They don't care whether it's coming from China or nothing you know, like that. That doesn't bother them at all. So I think, you know, even to some younger people, Google and YouTube, it's already kind of being phased out, you know, and this is the yeah. strange way that we, the world that we live in where generations of people don't do the Coke thing. They don't take the Coca-Cola. They <laughs> go for something new or they just change it completely. Yeah, I will say I haven't seen anything where I'm like, oh, this is the next like TikTok is one thing, but I don't think for what we do, like yeah. unless you're producing really short form video, yeah. I don't really see that being like the thing yeah. that takes this that takes 100%. something like YouTube over. So. We'll have to see. I don't know. I really don't. I really have no clue what's coming up. In this vein, I do see one technology that has that is eventually going to be huge, and that's Web3. I don't know if you guys are following Web3 or any crypto or anything like that. As much as I can. I, I barely yeah. can wrap my head around it, which is well, terrifying. Exactly, because it's so new. And yeah. they're we're literally they're literally building it right now, and most of the world looks at all that stuff and says, "Oh, it's a scam, whatever." And it's like, uh, mm. "No, it's the next thing." There's certainly, I think, there are more scammers than you than there otherwise would be, because it's so new. So there are a lot of scams in that realm, just because yeah. with anything new, like that happened with the internet when it was new as well. Mm -hmm. So like. I think because it's new by its very nature, there's going to be a lot of like kind of iffy stuff going on around that. So totally, but, yeah. What, what's what's what is Web three? Explain it to me like I'm a ten year old child, Chris. Dude, I don't know. I, I really <laughs> like it's better internet? Question mark. I don't no, know. No, no, no. The basics <laughs> of it is wh where um, where you you control your own data, That's, and yeah. you give permission and and to thing to 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 other platforms and you can revoke permission to other platforms. For instance, you know how these days, everything you give to Facebook is theirs. They use it mm. to, to do what they do. Same with Google, same with everything. Mm -hmm. They're just gathering all the data and they're coming up with these new things. And then, yeah. So that is web two. Web three is where the, the individual has more control. And I'm, I, this is a, generalization i'm just you know sure. there's a lot to web3 there's a lot of different angles to it but basically it's the fact that i should be in control of my content and i should post it where i want to post it and if i want to take it down from somewhere i should be able to take it down from somewhere and okay gotcha because of because of blockchain and the way blockchain works on the back end you can do that and that's what they're calling web3 so there's a lot of different areas of web3 but yeah that's the general gist is is taking yeah. control yeah. away from these big companies and giving it back to the individual. Well, and it's closer. I would the what I've kind of heard is it's closer to how like an RSS feed works where you kind of it's it's not outside any in it's outside any kind of individual company. Like you can just control what happens within that with that as long as you're hosting the files. Like it's just all your choice. And that's that's kind of the the analogy that I hear. But yeah, man, it's one of those things where we're at this kind of weird juncture of and now AI is coming into the the playing field. Like everything is gonna be different in, in five years, this is gonna be an unrecognizable industry. Yeah. I just just raise a quick I'm going in from a, my my work with uh, media here in Europe. That's a very European idea. 
you know, where to take away the corporate attitude. We're constantly working on that in the European Union. Like, for example, you know, the cookies thing. That's that's an EU. Yeah. You know, that was originally a European Union concept that spread worldwide. Europe was the first to, well, Germany was the first to do that, actually. You know, you go to, like, for example, you go to Germany, it's a lot of stuff that works normally uh, on your phone or on your lab, laptop won't work in Germany. Uh, there's some suspect stuff, as we can't talk about, but, uh, you know, there's lots of general stuff doesn't work. And that's because they're very strict control over what you control. So a lot of that stuff is has filtered into the European Union's policy on, you know, controlling the internet in the positive sense, I mean, that giving back control to people. So yeah, it sounds it sounds like a very European initiative. And I can probably say to you, it'll probably pop up first in the European Union before anywhere else. We mm. always trial stuff like that. Gotcha. Yeah. And it also reminds me of, you know, Bitcoin. The yeah. idea of Bitcoin that, you know, here's a currency. No one owns it. No one controls it. Hmm. It just is. And there, therefore, I don't need a government or a bank or anyone. Hmm. It's me and you. No yeah. one in between. That is, I mean, but like I said, I think I think this is kind of a crazy time to be in this industry because um, we're kind of we're used to this, the thought of like hosting content somewhere and like having our, like posting to social media in a certain way on a certain platform, getting followers on a certain platform. Like I really do think that between AI and Web3 and podcasting 3.0, that's a whole other thing. That's like, it's- 2.0, yeah. Oh, two, oh 2.0, did I say 3.0? Um, yeah, that's a whole other thing. And so, like I said, I think we kind of, as, as podcasters and podcast creators that deal with creators, um, I think we need to be really careful that we're kind of steering people in the right way, because this is going to be a couple of years of a lot of change. And there's going to be a point where we have to switch over, like jump the curb, you know, and it's going to be brutal when that actually happens. Um, because you, it's just the, none of the rules are going to apply anymore. And yeah. so like, we just suddenly have to be like, Oh, there's no such thing as followers anymore on a platform. Mm. So what does that mean? What do we do now? Like, yeah. it's going to be crazy. So yeah. the, doing stuff like this, I think is pretty much one of the most important things that you can do if you create podcasts or help others do it is just kind of stay really, really up to date on everything that's going on beyond the, the cutting edge. Mm. Yeah, imagine when when crypto and Bitcoin get more popular and then there's going to I mean, there could come a day when anyone who has a website that accepts payments, all of a sudden now they're going to want to accept Bitcoin. So now they're going to have to revamp and overhaul their website or pl use plugins or something. Think yeah. about that. Every website in the world that takes money is going to have to revamp and in integrate this new yeah. stuff. That That's I mean, wow. I know it's 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 wild, and it, we're just on the on the ver we're like on behind the railing, just kind of watching it right now. But it's not going to be long before it actually starts having some real world effects and stuff. So, but I've, I think I've as started well, using AI a lot in my workflow, yeah. and it's been crazy what I've been able to do. So, yeah, I think I think it, generally though, history is telling us, isn't it, that integration is not as difficult as we sometimes lead to believe. You know, it's it, a lot of the heavy lifting gets done before we have to do yeah it's not y2k <laughs> yeah okay. i was thinking about it and i didn't want to raise it because it's, just... <laughs> it's too old for that shit you know, it's just like <laughs> stood around new year's day going what the hell you know the i money. was eight years old so i don't know yeah you, you, you were worried about sweets then <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> yeah next <laughs> okay next uh let's talk about real quick we're not going to go into it a lot but the PodFest Global Conference that's coming up. This is a virtual conference. It's 100% online, and it's from March 27th to the 30th. It's run by PodFest, which is a great organization that does, you know, real world, uh, 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 one annual real in-person conference a year in Orlando, Florida. And they do a bunch of meetups around the country. Uh, but this is, this is pretty cool. So if you're, you know, what they do is they just get a lot of different speakers teaching a lot of different things. And there was a time when you could apply to be a speaker, but that's far gone because now it's going to be live in what, three days. So, and I don't even know if the presentations are live. I think they might require the presenters to re pre record it and send it in. So I don't know. But um, anyway, the point is if, if you're looking to learn something, Hey, Jamie, Jamie Ritchie's here. Awesome. 
Okay, she's popping in. Yeah, great to see you. Another graduate of Podcast Engineering School. Jamie, yeah, good to see you. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's it for PodFest Global. And and one thing is, was it last year or two years ago, they set a Guinness Book World Record for the biggest online conference in really? the world. Yeah. Oh. Huh. They wow. were going for the record every year. I know they did it two years in a row at least, I think. This year, I, I don't. I don't see the promotion for the world record or Guinness mm. Book. But gotcha. Wow. Anyway, you would have thought something a bit more darker right? would have been the most attended to. <laughs> I'm not going to mention any names, but we, something begins with P and ends with N. You know, you would think something like that might be a big crowd of a Jesus. That's amazing. That's yeah. Crazy. Yeah. So it's a good place to learn and everything. It's a good resource to have. So. But yeah, well, we have a lot of other topics to talk about. Uh, Ken, do you want to pick? Another topic? Oh, um, oh, okay. You I have got the whole, me. I have um, your whole list too. If you want to go through, I can. Li- I can. We yeah, can discuss it. Hold on, it. hold on. I, I, ooh, you caught me out there now. Um, <laughs> try, can you throw it up for me and I'll have a look there. Yeah, yeah. Take a look. Um, take your time. We're just hanging out. Yeah. Barry's here with us. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <baby>. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's ridiculous. I was like, oh, oh nice. We got another. Oh, okay. Hey, uh, excuse <laughs> me, Barry. Uh, what what topic do you think uh, Ken is going to choose? That's a mystery. <laughs> I know. We don't know yet. I don't know why that tickles me so much, but it does. Like I see, I know, I know it. You've done the joke already. Like it's we 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 know the bit, and every time you do it, it just makes me laugh. I don't it's know why. So, it's just bar- it's Barry. It's not me. <laughs> Who is it? The real Barry, as in the Barry White, or am I just? Being that's a Barry dude? White. Yeah. No. Oh Wait, what? No. That's, not, that's not Barry White. It is not. Everyone thinks it's Barry White. That it sounds is not- just like Barry White, dude. Yeah. This guy's name is Barry. He was the maintenance guy in my building in New Jersey. <laughs> I swear to God, when I had my fractal recording <laughs> podcast studio. Oh, that's amazing. Dude, what okay, I love I'm about this is that you're like, I got to get this guy. I got to oh, get God. this guy on tape. He needs like, a podcast show. I, I literally, dude, his in person, his voice is 10 times better than this. It's <laughs> it, it's a voice wow. you hear and you just look at him like, you like stunned. You couldn't capture it. <laughs> no, but I did. He would come in and sit down to take a break because he was an older guy. He was probably oh. mid sixties, late sixties. So he would come in to my studio and sit around the corner. So if someone walked by, they couldn't see him. And him and I would chat while he rested. And slowly one day, I w- I didn't even ask him. I mean, <laughs> I just put a mic in a stand. I hooked it up. I brought it a little closer to him. I, I walked around the room, brought it a little closer, and he just was telling wow. stories. I have like almost an hour of him just talking and telling stories. That it is, is so r- cool. riveting. He is the DJ from you know WKRP that that uh, you know that Steely Dan song. You know the Independent Station. That's who he is. It's him. It's that dude Barry from WKRP. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's brilliant. His amazing voice. Yeah, oh my god, that man! Could I turn... I one hundred percent thought it was Barry White. Like I no question. Too. He could do a Jedi. He could be a great Jedi. You know, that's just use him for that. Listen, I have my list here. Do you want me to start? So. Oh yeah. Great. Okay. Um, yeah, we've kind of gone past the first one. What is a podcast and the changing definition? We've kind of talked about that now. Yeah. So, yeah, there was one thing I've noticed, which has been coming up a little bit. And I, I thought we could maybe have a chat about it because it's, uh, it's something that really gets on my wick. Um, it's kind of like this idea of, you know, uh, theme music. I mean, is it that important? I mean, because I generally think theme music is a huge issue for a podcast. I think you have to have a nice little 20 or 30 second intro and because it makes people familiar and so on. Maybe that's me coming from my days as, you know, as, as being in radio and stuff like that. So I'm wondering what you guys think about that theme music. Is it a necessity for a good quality professional podcast? Oh, yes. Welcome to the podcast engineering <laughs> show. My name is Chris go. Curran. I should have said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I start my show. But yeah, yes. no. What do you think, Cody? You want to go first? Yeah. So I actually, I probably have an interesting take on this because I'm actually a from a music production background. Um, I went to school for music production. Same here. Uh, yeah. I wanted to be a film composer. That was like my mm-hmm. thing. Was I wanted to do that? Um, 
and that was like my first audio gigs ever that I got paid for were writing was writing music for podcasts. Yeah. Um, like, you know, when I was getting vastly underpaid, like, you know, I'll, I'll do it for $20, just please, you know. Um, so that was like, I, when I when I think of a podcast intro, I'm seeing these people with like, I, I get clients that have kind of an established podcast. And they've mm. got like a full minute or more of like this pre-recorded yeah. intro. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, this needs to be, this needs to be like a, a little sting for, for someone that has no idea what they're about to listen yeah. to, it needs to be self-contained. I'm Cody, and this is the podcast about da-da-da-da, and this is what we do. Thanks for listening. Boom. 15, 20 seconds. Get in, in and out and just do it. But, like, I don't even – music is important. Music music sets a tone. It signals things. That we're about to, to change segments. We're about to go to ad break. We're about yeah. to go to the outro. So I think it is important because it allows you to kind of – do a, a, a easier fade but man i do hear people kind of over over using it sometimes like or just having too much of a, a focus on like what is my song mm. um i get i get that question a lot like oh should i worry about the song and i'm like dude i'll find you some stock music in mm. like 20 minutes let's do that and i'll you buy it and we're done forever we never have to think about this <laughs> again you know so i agree it's it's not it's not a huge deal. Just find something that fits your vibe and just keep it moving. Mm. Chris? Totally, yeah. I definitely agree with that. Um, that's why in my show, I'll start... I, what I just did with that music, that's literally the beginning of my podcast. So yeah. it's I use it as I use it as just an energy, right? And then I fade and it, it works. down. I was like stoked the heck yeah. like up when you played that. I was just I was so stoked. But yeah, yeah that's so, that's kind of what I mean. You get someone in the mood for your podcast by hmm. you know if they were just listening in the feed, like they're like I, that's how I think of it. It's like if they had a, a a list of just the feed of their podcasts that that they subscribe to, and this one plays next, they hear the song and they go, oh, that's this podcast. And then if someone's listening for the first time, which you're, you're hopefully growing every week, so every single podcast is going to have listeners that hasn't heard the previous episode. If you're yeah. still growing, which hopefully you are, so the way I look at it is like. You need to have something to be like, if you've never heard it, here's what this is. And so, but yeah. more than that, I don't think is necessary at all. It, my take on it is that um, I can come out again. I'm coming at it from a European perspective. I think theme music is very important if you want to present an idea of where you're presenting from in Europe. And, you know, we like, for example, one of our very first podcasts was called Eurochat. And, you know, we had a very punchy U2 style sound because we were from Ireland. You know, and it was, it, I don't know about it. Can I play it here? If I play something, Chris, can you hear it? Um, <laughs> probably not, unless you have uh, I can audio try hide it. or loopback yeah. set up. No, it depends what you're feeding me. But I think you're probably just feeding me yeah. your mic signal. Yeah, no, it's grand. No, but anyway, yeah. and then like for Lydia's podcast, we have a very toy music style thing. And uh, I think it works, you know, I think it really works because. Lots of kids love the sound when they listen to your podcast. Yeah, I love that song, you know. So I think it's, you got to if you're going to do it, you got to do it well. You know, you can't just have a kind of chunky bit at the start. And or do, the worst thing I do find is some podcasts is that they don't fade out properly. They start talking when the music's really, really loud. You know, and they're saying, "Hi, my name's Derek," and the music's still playing a full blast. And you're saying, "Turn down the music," you know. So I think it's it's almost about if you're going to do the music, you should probably probably do it well rather than just. What's doing your it calling hard. card? Yeah. Well, and I think not just the yeah. music. I think just kind of having a really good, solid intro and outro, like yeah, at the beginning, introducing what, like I said, introducing kind of what you do succinctly in a really quick package, mm. and then at the end, giving someone a call to action: go download my course, go check out my YouTube channel, um, mm -hmm. subscribe to this this podcast. I think not enough people do that they they it's the joke is the like and subscribe thing from youtube <laughs> um but really like you kind of need to do that because it's just one of those things where you just have to if you don't ask people won't do it and so if you have a thing that you want someone to do you need to actually tell them to do it um so that's that's actually what i tell my clients it, basically exactly that is just get some get them in there get some music that fits your vibe explain what you do and then on your outro give them something to do go yeah go take an action but. Yeah, it's funny now you say that because I had another topic that I thought we could discuss and we've merged it already. It's about having a great intro. Um, it's so important, I think, you know, because it, it immediately sets the bar. Like, I've worked really hard on my intros. You know, for example, when my daughter's one, she does the intro. She simply says, hello, welcome to episode, whatever it is. 
Today I'm reviewing bang, bang, bang. And then the music comes back in for 10 seconds. And, you know, with my one down, it's a kind of, I have a stock intro. It never changes. It's just me saying, hi, this is the comfortable spot. Welcome. And then another few more seconds of music. And then I introduce the guest. Mm -hmm. And I find like the feedback I've got from that is where people say, that's really cool because you get straight to the guest. But the intro, I think it's it's important. I don't know what you guys think about. Do they change? Does an intro change with the type of podcast you have? Maybe. Definitely. Um, so I actually just got through. Uh, I just got through producing a really big project. It's a true crime podcast. Um, it's actually a fascinating story. I'll I'll mention it if you want to look it up. It's called Love and Justice. Mm -hmm. um, it's about a girl who actually was murdered, um, and the host actually knows the family and is like friends with the family and stuff. Um, crazy, crazy story. Like I'm, I'm not going to get into it, but like, holy cow, go listen to it. It's nuts. Yeah. Um, but basically his, the way he was telling stories was like, sometimes he would do a little, like a couple minutes of, it was very narrative. So it wasn't just like an episodic thing, you know? So it was telling the story. So some episodes would be like, we'd go right in and it would be him talking to the girl's mom about, you know, what happened with the cops and like the cops names. Do you remember anybody? And so like, but then sometimes he would just dive right in and say, you know, on, sometimes when there's a cold case, there's things that get in the way. And then today we're going to talk about da, 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 And then it would, the music would mm. fade up. It's artistically. I think if you have an episodic like show where every episode is basically the same, it's just the content changes. I think that's yeah. different than if you have like a big kind of narrative show sometimes for artistic reasons that you might want to like change stuff up or have things a little different. But I think, I think what is what people really like is a consistent format. If it's something episodic like that. Yeah. But I like the idea that you've just portrayed there because it kind of keeps people on the back foot, doesn't it? And that's the whole idea of the podcast. You know, it's that eerie kind of, Oh, what comes next? Hey, that's changed. Yeah. So yeah, that works. You know, it doesn't work if you're say, if you're doing a political podcast where you're interviewing one person per episode, right. you know, if you keep throwing yeah. it, if you keep throwing a curve ball, you know, that some people can get annoyed by that and they wouldn't know where to find it. Well, but it's yeah, like TV. It's, like, you know, yeah. you see, you'll see a show like something like the office where they have those mm. cold opens and yeah. it's like you, it, it's sometimes it's a different length and sometimes a different kinds of content. Sometimes it's funny. Mm. Sometimes it's not. And then you go right into the theme song. That's kind of how I view it is like, if it's like more like a show where you have like a, like episode to episode, like it's an arc that goes between lots of episodes. I think you can kind of take some artistic license with it. But if it's literally like, you're making the same type of content each week. Like, don't surprise them. Like, you know what I mean? Just let people know what they're about to hear and keep it consistent, I think. So I just one last thing on this is that we, we, we did a podcast on the country of Moldova where we interviewed young people from there. And it was a six part podcast. And we had this kind of funky Moldovan style music. It was like a dance Moldovan music. And actually, we got loads of emails. You know, we said next week is the last episode. And that evening, I got like 20 emails with people saying, can you play the theme tune to the very end? So like we kind of went, okay, thanks very much. That's the end of the uh, series. And I'm going to finish with the song. Oh, you played the Here whole it thing. Is. And we played yeah, the see, whole thing. And I that's thought a it was great a great example ending of, to the podcast. Right. That's, I, th I think that's a great example of like you can be a little bit artistic with it. Like you can take yeah. some liberties and people yeah. like the change a little bit as long as you're kind of sticking with a theme that you've established, I think. So it doesn't yeah. have to be literally yeah. the same file you're dropping in there every week. But like yeah. same format, you know, uh, I have a client who who it's a, is a new client and she's talking about it's like past failures and stuff. Um, and with the intro that we've established is she starts telling the story and there's uh, had the mu like kind of this funny music starts creeping up and then it drops and then she says something That's like cool. like a catchy line and then yeah. uh, the intro starts. And so it's like yeah, this cool. this hook, but it's not exactly the same every week. So yeah, I think yeah. as long as you're hooking people in, you're telling people what your show is going to be about, like or at least giving them an idea if you're not straight up saying it. And then I think... Um, like I said, maybe taking some artistic license when it's appropriate. I think that that's kind of what my recommendations would be. Hmm. Chris. Yeah. Jamie says she likes hearing music at the beginning of podcasts, but definitely you don't want it to be too long. She says, mm. so yeah. I will, I will skip max. you. I will skip you so hard if you have music in your it, that's too long in your show. In fact, yeah. Pod, Pocket Cast is the the app that I use, and you can actually set like a uh, pre skip. Uh, for like, so like if you listen to an, a certain podcast, you can say, skip the first 90 seconds of this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. do, I have a couple shows that I listen to that have just, their intros are way too long. Wow. So I just skip like two minutes of their, of their show. 
Um, yeah, the worst yeah. intro I ever had one time was I was li- somebody had sent me a podcast, and it was um it was funded by the European Union Arts Division, so they sent me this podcast about um people who lived in Paris, and you know it was very arty, and like there was somebody playing a violin, and they actually paid this person you know like a fortune to pay play the violin and write an individual piece for wow. the podcast. It was one minute forty seconds long That's before really anybody long. said anything. And then finally, this guy comes on and says, welcome to the podcast. And he just said that. And then for another 10 or 15 seconds, the violin went on. And I was <laughs> like, going, oh, this is clearly a bubble problem. You know, <laughs> these people well, have just got a lot yeah. of cash, had a great artistic idea and never listened to another podcast. Yeah, I know <laughs> they have no idea. And the, and the worst part is it. the worst part is there are ways to do that, that, that yeah, kind of, of make it succinct and artsy and they can still keep the vibe and everything. Yeah. So it's just a shame. I think that's one Any of the reasons. Any decent I always... engineer would have would have said to them, lads, right. yeah. get the scissors out. Come on. Yeah, you know? yeah. So that, that's actually one of the reasons I always tell people. Like I do a lot of a lot of uh, like I do like audio is like my thing. Making stuff, audio mm. stuff. Um, but I've gotten much more into consulting recently because of that exact thing. Is that like I just have done this so many times at this point that I'm like, you don't want to do that. Trust me, you don't want to do that. And people start asking me, hey, like what you know why. Should I have this? Should I have this? Should I have this kind of content in my my podcast? And so it really, I mean, when you listen to as many episodes as people like us do, you start to go, that's not right. Like, no, don't do that, you know? Yeah. So. And if you chance your arm and come in and say, you know, today we're going to be talking about, you know, if you could, I've, I've had listened to podcasts where the guy just starts off talking. That is kind of really catchy on the back foot, you know, because it doesn't, there's nothing to prepare you for him to talk. I think it's generally uncomfortable for people to listen to something. And for somebody to just start talking, yeah, I know unless you mean. have a very, very, very distinctive voice like Barry, you know, because then people <laughs> yeah. just look forward to Barry talking. But if you've got this very, you know, blunt sort he's of looking down, sort of look thing. at him. He's he's looking for a sample. <laughs> I can ready. see it already. <laughs> he's looking down. I don't know which one to play. I don't know whether to go to page two or not. It's a mystery. <laughs> it's a mystery. Yeah, that's so. It. Yeah. A few more ideas on the intro. I've had a several. I, I don't know if I'll remember yeah. them all, but. Um, I think Ken earlier you touched on the mixing of it. Like, if the music's real loud and the voice is way low, you can't understand mm. it. Like, that's not good. Even the music just being way too loud. I mean, do you ever press play in a podcast and get your head blown off your yeah. shoulders? I think yeah. that's a common that is- problem. I think that's a common problem because people have those pre-recorded intros and they won't bother to like mix the mix two. It. And so you end up, but with it just tells you, in. you know, even on the most basic systems like Audacity, it shows you it's going red, red. And of course, red, we and know that. Still ignore of us. course, we yeah. know that. We're not exactly. talking. We're not talking about us. Yeah, yeah. It's not like they decided to use blue as a warning light just to make you know spice things up a bit. Red light spells danger, you know. And it was like <laughs> I do see it, and I why did why did they what were they thinking in the mix? You know, were they just all gone off to buy chicken wings or something? I don't. It's crazy. That'd Sorry, be fine. It's close enough. Boom. Normalize. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, no, an- yeah. another thing that I do is I sort of have a loose script for my intro, but mm-hmm. I do my intro live every episode. So I make it wow. different. I just I-, I say generally the same things, but I don't always say the same things. Sometimes I get into it more quickly. Sometimes I'll, you know, maybe promote something. Mm. Um, but I really like that. From from the day same. I got into podcasting. I loved this idea that you just do it live and you just be yourself and bring the energy yep. because people can feel that. Um, one thing I despise the most is is someone who has a pre-produced intro. Okay. Welcome to the XYZ show. On this show, we talk to these types of people about these types of issues and no. we really go deep into what it is and all that stuff. Okay, and then fine. And then the pre- then that pre-produced intro ends, and then the live person comes in and says, the same "Hi, thing. Welcome, welcome to the, to the show. show. No. This is where we talk about X, Y, and Z." Why and I'm did like, you do ah. that? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, I know it's because no. it's like, why don't why don't you? I I, I think it's because it, that's exactly because I think they have a pre-recorded intro because they just or they, they are don't recording. have the experience to cut it. Sure. Cody. Yeah, they no, don't that's have the true. That's to true. Edit that. That's and they true. think they, they don't rely on that. I do it. My my podcast says, "Hello, welcome to the comfortable spot." And then I just introduce the guest. And then the music plays for 10 seconds and then it's, 
hi joe how are you welcome to the comfortable spot you know because people should i want people to read the, the you know the listing that's written in each podcast i want them to read the show notes i want them to know a little bit about the, the guest it shouldn't be up to me as you say chris to spend 15 minutes doing a big long intro and then doing it all over again it's not even it, it like shows yeah. a lack of faith i think in your podcast your podcast after four or five episodes should be able to tell the story itself yeah. Yeah. Something you said earlier too, Ken. You said about how sometimes no intro can be awkward. But I yeah. recently, over the last month, found a YouTube channel, and I know that's slightly different than a podcast, but a YouTube channel where a woman is doing reaction videos. The video starts, and she's she literally. This is what she says. No long intro. I'll just start, and then she right. clicks play on the video that she's reacting to. Man, that's refreshing, actually. Yeah. It's so refreshing, <laughs> like. I, you know what I mean? Like that's a, yeah. my first thought was like I like this. Cha I like that. <laughs> well, here you know, you know I will I say. Go on, oh, sorry, Craig. Oh, I was, I was gonna say. So like, I think with anything, like there are except there will always be exceptions to the rule. If it's yeah. well executed, you can always have a really long intro. Like there's gonna be versions of that that just work because of how they are. Yeah. Um, that's a really good example. Well, here's the like, thing. Normally, here's I the thing. Like, I guarantee. Oh, I guarantee you she didn't do that deliberately. She didn't think about that. She just probably just done that very naturally and said, this is sure. how I do it. Yeah. She and probably didn't give it as much thought as we're thinking yeah. about it yeah. now. <laughs> I think what I think just intuitively, I think she doesn't like long intros. And yeah, she said, you know what? I'm going to go the whole other way. The fact yeah. that she said no long intro makes me think she's like, no, I'm not doing <laughs> exactly. that to you. Exactly. Yeah. But she definitely didn't think about her, her attack or her pose or her poison or her verbal intonations. She let it go. <laughs> Honestly, Press th that's my other thing. Oh, man, I love that we've gotten to the point where technology just allows anybody to do this. Like, it's <sighs> so cool. Like, I hear a lot of people be like, oh, you know, whatever. Like, this is just making it so there is a bunch of crap in the field and we have to wait yeah. around it. But I love it. I think it's so cool that, like, literally anybody with a smartphone could start a podcast today. And it, would, yeah. it could be half decent. Like, you could actually do pretty good. I just think that's so cool. And the well, fact here's that the we're... Thing. It it's it's like what you guys would have not you probably didn't experience this in the US because your 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 radio your idea and your concept and how it was presented in America is very different to how it was presented in Europe and in Ireland and the UK in particular so like back in the 60s 70s and early 80s we had pirate radio in both the UK and Ireland constantly being hit constantly being closed down local radio stations guys setting up radio stations in the back shed in their house and you know playing the music that's not so that's not always played on the mainstream radio stations and that was all shut down because what happened was they they de they regularized how radio needs to be done so in the uk and ireland nowadays if you want to open a radio station you have to sign a million forms pay a big deposit and you know make sure that you're doing everything correct podcasting is the new pirate radio it basically means that you don't have to conform. Now, the uh, the upside is, of course, that you get, as you just spoke there, Cody, amazing content. Content is incredible. I could look tonight. I was talking to a guy tonight about my uh, my podcast. He was being interviewed. He was a historian, and he was talking about how uh, this so called Irish legend about a guy who killed John the Baptist from Ireland. He's from Kerry, and he was supposed to have killed John the Baptist. So my guest was saying that he just laughed it off. And then he just looked it up. He said, oh, maybe I should just look this one. There was an entire podcast series on this guy. You know, <laughs> like, that's the whole point. So you can like, whether it's fly fishing or the next people on Mars, podcasting is there for you. That's the beauty of it. Well, you get, I mean, like, that's junk, but, true. You know. Yeah. Well, that's true with everything. Like when music production became more like electronic and you could yeah. just basically use a computer to do it. Like anybody with a laptop could make a whole album and they did. It's punk rock tactics. That's what it is. Yeah. And I think punk, do it yourself. It isn't just podcasts. I mean, obviously there's that same kind of thing. Sure. Everyone with a smartphone can start a YouTube channel now in 4k. Like that's yeah, wild yeah. to me. Know, um, but like the, it's, I think it's so cool and it's, and really it's a huge opportunity for people like me that are making podcasts because there are always going to be businesses who see this and go cha-ching, right? They can monetize, yeah. they can sell their products. And so, I mean, it's never been cheaper to start a podcast. And so it's, why not do it? You know, it's a, it's this low cost thing that a business can do or an individual can just kind of go, Hey, I'm going to do a podcast about this thing I'm passionate about and they can monetize it. And so it's just, I, I know this is totally off topic. I just, I just marvel at this constantly that we're in this amazing time of like for a hundred bucks, you can have a studio quality podcast like crazy. in in your room for free yeah. pretty much so crazy. actually maybe we could talk about that um i think what i said as well about the next step in podcast technology 
Um, like, so maybe we could, you guys, you probably know a lot more than I would about this. Like the advances in microphones, for example, are using, say, what you said there, Cody, but using a complete online services versus a home studio equipment. So I'm just wondering what your thoughts are on that, because I have the Rodecaster, you know, the Rodecaster Pro. I don't use it to have the things that it can do, but I generally like the sound. And, you know, I, although it wasn't working tonight for some strange reason, I have about three of these, you know, and they, they really just do a great sound. Now I have the portable USB one. But that's what I'm saying. Like five years ago, if my microphone didn't work, we'd have been up the creek. Today, I just bought, you know, these were $50 or 50 euros and they're the backup. That's the backup. You know, that's the backup. And the backup yeah. is as good as the backup is as good as the, as the other one. Do you know what I'm saying? You're not yeah, dropping yeah. in technology, whereas you know yourself, guys, if you're in a gig, you're doing a gig and you have your, your Shure SM58 and that goes. They're great. Some guy's going to hand you a drum mic. You know, and you're going like, oh, jeez, there goes the gig, you know, um, whereas nowadays it's like, you know, the technology is so accessible. So I'm wondering what you think about that. What's your views on that? Well, I mean, as a as a guy that creates these things, most of my clients, all of my clients, actually, they're remote. They, I work with them remotely. I, you know, I don't do any like in studio recording whatsoever, which means they have to be in charge of all of their equipment, which is absolutely terrifying for someone like people like us that are like, you know, you need we know the technique and the setup and everything, but, um, you know, with with services like Riverside where you're able to kind of do remote recordings and with services like, um, similar similar ones to that where you can basically just kind of be there sort of, um. I, I think, honestly, I prefer in a lot of ways to do these kind of remote recordings um, because it, it really does make it a lot more, it kind of democratizes it a little bit. Like you said, there, everything is so cheap now that you don't have to have this multi-mic studio set up and rent studio space and you can get a quiet room, semi-quiet room. I'm just in like a converted bedroom here. Um, I have a mic that was like 150 bucks um, that got sent to review. So that's and then then a old audio interface from like early days of music production that i wasn't using so really like you can scrape together really high quality equipment or you can use like an iphone like yeah. by itself and that's half decent so i think these online services are that's what's really democratizing it otherwise like you would have to still get like studio space and have a you know, but being okay. able to get guests from anywhere and, and any yeah. any time and stuff, that's, you know. Well, here's a question I have for you, Cody, then. So, you know, when you say people are using, it's getting easier and easier. Some of the tricks are kind of disappearing, though, aren't they? You know, the way we will, we, all of us in the music business would have started off with Cubase. So, you know, Cubase, when you look back on it now, it's, it's, ah, it's like, you know, reading off a tablet, on a stone tablet I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. But back then, it was a great, it was a godsend. You know, especially if you're doing dance music or anything like that, which were required block on block, you know, timing like, uh, you know, quantize. I mean, that was the word oh, back in the 90s. Imagine. Yeah. Let quantize everything, you know, and everything just suddenly went into tune and into time. And I'm just wondering, like, you know, it's like say when you lots of I see lots of amateurs using audacity because it's simple and it's easy to use. I mean, I, I use that sometimes. And then I tackled Adobe Edition, Adobe, uh, I can't think of the name, Adobe Audition. Yeah, I just spent three hours just looking at the screen, going, "Where the hell do I start?" <laughs> you know. So, so is there? What I'm trying to say is, there going to is there still going to be a market for audition five years from now, or will people go, "Nah, I'm not going to oh, bother with that." I absolutely think so because right. there's always going to be people like us. Um, <laughs> you, you know, there's always going to be the the pros that know their stuff that that are going to work at the, uh, the at Spotify and at Gimlet and at NPR and there's there that market is never gonna there's they're gonna need pro software they're gonna need to use plugins they're gonna need to use stuff that you can't get in another type of software and not asset you can use plugins but like yeah. something like Descript Descript yeah. is excellent for beginners it's pretty much the easiest you could get my wife has zero audio experience whatsoever she's never touched a DAW ever and I in about 30 40 45 minutes or so I was able to teach her how to edit a podcast just like using Descript for the first time. She had never seen it before. So she's opening it the first time. That's huge. That's amazing. Um, and that's to my standards, not to just like, yeah. this is how you cut stuff. Like she was actually able, able to edit, do fades and things like that that I would do. And so she, th th I think that that kind of thing is, those tools are going to start growing a lot right now. Um, yeah. I am 
I met some people at Podcast Movement that have a tool called Podflow. Brand, brand new, like early, early stages. But they're trying to basically spit out an auto edit where you, where it's just they decide what should be cut, like filler words and breaths and stuff. Wow. And they you just have it and it's just done. And I'm like... <laughs> And of that. course, <laughs> of course, that gives us hives listening to that. Yeah, yeah, but again, and we're saying that now, but it's yeah. in its earliest stages, you know, yeah, what if yeah. down the road, like it can learn from your voice and what you would cut? I mean, imagine something like Descript, except it learns what you cut typically, yeah. and it can just learn and just do it for you. I mean, there's so though, I think that those tools are the ones that beginners are going to use because people can just download an app, have their stuff f- like... Descript has this studio sound feature that's like, oh. you know, noise cancellation and it makes your voice warmer and it like does some EQ and AI's fancy yeah. stuff. And it's one click and it's but it's never going to sound quite as good as like studio treated sound in, you know, you you have it recorded well, you use Isotope RX or something and you really, you know, know what you're doing. You I EQ it by hand and stuff like that. Are there going to be tools that that make that easier? I definitely think so. But those early beginner tools, I think are going to be, I mean, I use Descript on the vast majority of the things I edit because it's just that much easier. But I also still use stuff like Logic or Hindenburg to kind of do your final, your final pass. And Hindenburg just announced they're doing transcripts now. So like they're Ah, kind of merging these beginner tools, AI tools, and these pro tools as well to kind of create this hybrid that's unbelievable makes things so much easier and but i don't think the market's going away because there's always going to be a need for that final mm. you're going to need to do side chain and you're going to need to do things that you know you can't do that in the, in, in a lot of these basic tools so you're going to need to quantize <laughs> that's what you're going to need to do <laughs> that's what i mean and there and there's that's what i that's why i think like no matter what ai tools are out there i think that you know it, our jobs are going to get easier Hmm. And I know that your question wasn't really about AI, but I always default to this because I'm obsessed with AI right now. But um, like the these tools are going to make our jobs easier. And then there's going to be still this market for like it'll make us faster, really. That's what it's actually yeah. going to do. And then we can could do these final touches, which, you know, someone's got to listen to that. It's not going to go out by itself. Like we might just be glorified QA people at the end of the day. But like someone's got it. someone's got to do it and know what they're listening that's to. that's true that's true yeah. chris what do you think i mean you're kind of on the ball there yeah i agree with cody everything you just said i agree with and uh one thing i can bring to the table is this uh newer feature of technology it's not really that new but it's uh it's it's a a way of recording audio so that you can never record distorted audio Tell me the freak more, Chris. Yeah, it's called 32-bit float. And, you know, you know, we can record in 16-bit. We can record in 24-bit. And we knew 32-bit existed. But if you record in 32-bit, the files are huge. But 32-bit float is this amazing technology where I could scream into this microphone and I could pin the meter... And then in post-production, I just take the wave on the screen and I make it smaller and I bring it down and it, now it sounds perfectly fine, no distortion at all. See, so 32, That's recording in 32-bit float, you cannot distort that recording ever. And Rode just came out with their NT1 fifth generation microphone has built in 32-bit float recording. Wow, so now that's there's super. a mic now there's a mic you can buy for your podcast or for your clients, whatever. It's not even that expensive. What is the NT one? Like two hundred and seventy five bucks? bucks? Really? Yeah, we had about a hundred and fifty bucks here in Ireland. Oh. Oh yeah, maybe it's two hundred here. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Holy it's not expensive. Yeah. It is a condenser mic, so you gotta be aware, you know, if, if you have yeah, a nasty pickle. room, it's gonna pick up a lot of the nasty room. Yeah, but yeah, still, yeah. geez. You could have a client record with a mic, they don't even have to set the level. You don't have to set the level. Okay. That's incredible. Now that you is know innovation. that's really good for. That's a change. Yeah, yeah. That's you know what that's great for. Like, say if you're a regular <coughs> radio station and you've got a bunch of regular guests, right? The problem with that is they always have different sound levels because sometimes they're using their goddamn laptop or something, you know. So if you could send that, you know, your investment to be like, say, if you had five regular people on your radio show, 
you could like spend a thousand bucks, send them, each one of them and say, use that. And then your life is just a million times easier. Because if you send them even Blue Yetis or whatever the hell, they still don't know how to, you know, they end up make, making a Mickey of it in some way or another. But if you have something yeah. that's idiot proof, really, then that's 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 a big step forward for not just us, but for professional radio stations and so on. Well, and I mean, that's that's one of those things where we're, we're asking non-professionals to record professional sounding audio. That's so the thing. Any, exactly. any tools yeah. that we can do. I mean, I'm imagining Riverside plus that is mm. like done, like no problems Patient, ever again. No, ever. Yeah. Yep. That's that's, that's amazing. I'll keep an eye on that because I'm actually on roads um, kind of mailing list. They mail me when something new comes out. So I'll definitely keep an eye out for that. That's good. Yeah, that's been out for about a month. Also, Zoom just came out with a with a small interface. I think it's a two two mic input interface that is also a thirty two bit float interface. Okay, oh, we're I talking bet. about the Japanese Zoom, aren't we? The the the, the um, audio manufacturer. The Zoom, the H six, the H four N, yeah, the H four N, that Zoom, yeah. 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 Oh, that's. I've got awesome. a hate so, six. I have to say, I it's amazing. What, yeah. What we're gonna see uh, this is what I think. Over the next, it's gonna take years, right? But the next, pro, the next product line for every company, they're gonna incorporate this 32-bit float. Because, well, it's gonna be one of those things that's just what, like, they've they'll include it in everything eventually. Yeah. Because it's yeah. they to stay it'll competitive. Be like, it'll be like Dolby, you know, back in the 70s. It'll just become a stamp on the side of your equipment, you know. Yeah. It'll be like that trademark that you know, if you buy something of quality and it has the Dolby button on it, you know, you bought it. that's that's really a good system. Well, it's like now how everybody's using Chat GPT and and everything and yeah. every product now is like integrating some kind of Chat GPT. Like if you don't, then you're the only one that won't. So yeah, so exactly. you got to do it. And unless you're Apple, you're screwed. You know? so, <laughs> yeah. You know? And and who knows, honestly, I I don't believe for a minute that they don't have something brewing. They've they, there's no way they haven't you know, they've, they've got just something. As a side, just as a side note, isn't it amazing? Like, I don't know, Chris, maybe you and me are a little bit older than, than Cody here. So we've probably got longer, ex long, longer experience <laughs> of, you know, the, the standard manufacturers that you go to. You know, when I when I first started, OK, the big boys were for anything, you know, anything on a keyboard was Korg, you know, really reaching back to sequential circuits, you know, when I was really young. You know, and Korg, and then Alesis, and then, you know, by the time it gets through. And, you know, then you had, for a while, you had a couple of other companies like Sennheiser for the heads and all that kind of stuff. And they're still the go to brands. But isn't it amazing that we have companies like Zoom and Rode who are producing these incredible user friendly equipment? Imagine if we had this equipment 20, 30 years ago. I mean, it would have been incredible because, like, when I first bought my H6, it took me the equivalent of 10 minutes to master everything because it really was just a tape recorder. Everything yeah. about it was exactly yeah. the same. And that was it. There was nothing, you know, you clock the microphones on the top, you take them off with a stereo, put them on for whatever, plug in the XLR jacks, got four podcasts. Oh, hang on. Here's an extra jack for another two more XLRs. You know, you now you've got six people on your podcast. It was just amazing. And I just think, isn't it great that we have all of these companies that are not huge, you know, they're not really game changes like the way Sony or any our techniques are, but they're still producing amazing quality equipment. Well, and also really niche equipment like yeah. that, that there's no, they wouldn't have dared do that before because there was like, no, like five people would have bought it. But nowadays, like there's this market for, I just got an ad for something called the blast mic. I think it was called. I have no, I have no idea what company this is or wow. even if it's any good. So nobody buy this, until yeah, you yeah. Search it. but, but it like, it broadcasts live like its whole thing is it broadcasts with with no other equipment is you wow. can just broadcast from it and i'm like what <laughs> that's just crazy and the, and no one no one would build that like the fact that no not like sony wouldn't build that you know what i mean like there, none of these big these big companies would do that but the fact that there's these little use cases is so cool and we're getting all this weird stuff that is yeah. actually just really great I think it's down to manufacturing, you know, they're like cottage, in cottage industry manufacturers. Yeah, a little bit for like, sure. um, I'm going to use a kind of a motoring analogy. Like back in the 1960s and 70s, Britain was famous for manufacturing these kind of very low volume, high quality sports cars, you know, like Morgan, uh, GRP and AC and all these car companies. So they only produce like 50 a year. They're very high quality, you know, expensive stuff. And I think what's happening in, in audio is the same thing. You know, it's not just in, you know, audio recording and digitizing and all that sort of stuff. It's also in just general use. People are, for example, 
as kids, Chris, you and I would have looked, we would have got their head battered off us if we walked down the road in the 1980s with these headphones on our head. Everybody had discreet little small ones. You know, nowadays, the bigger, the better. And all these small niche companies are just making massive steps and they've got this really quality equipment. I've seen a set of headphones advertised for 500 euros and they were wood. And I was going, what? You know, it's just crazy. That's yeah, awesome. they were wood. They were made of wood. You know, and I was going, Jesus. <laughs> like some Austrian company was making them, you know, they make it like 40 a year and charging like $500 for, a, you know, one set it's given to you, handed to you by somebody from the company. You know, it's like, <laughs> it was amazing. Like, so I think a lot and of it's so cheap, like, there. like you mentioned, yeah. it's just, it's never been cheaper to like any of the, any technology really like podcasting stuff, like mics and audio stuff too. But like also like stuff like a computer and monitors and a, a webcam. And like, I have a 4k webcam, the literally the best K webcam I could buy on the market best k the best quality webcam i could buy on the market um and it was like 200 bucks like yeah. like that's wild to me that that's all it takes so yeah whereas it's, before if you wanted that quality you'd have to buy a, a DLS, dlsr you know exactly like yeah and stick it up big jalopy thing in front of yeah. you know <laughs> it's eating yeah. the battery power you know <laughs> yeah so, so it's, yeah, it's it's just cool that i mean it's it's a lot of opportunity for creators and creators for creators alike um to just really like d dial in and like do do some stuff and you know, like i i always recommend kind of a really cheap package of like what would be I, i'm curious i'm not really a hardware guy i'm much more of like a software guy so i'm curious what would be like your you know your cheap your cheap pro like setup for a mic for a brand new podcaster that is just getting into the game um, uh you're asking me are you um, both of you i'm curious you, yeah. i'm curious what you'd both say there's mine <laughs> oh really the, is yeah. that the h1n yeah it costs uh, 70 euros and it is incredible you can bring it with you you can put it in front of people you know just stack it tight stick it in front of two people talking pick I up actually have fantastic. one yeah you can use it as yeah. a usb mic too right you, you can yeah and then you can plug it in to your laptop and you can just do your podcast through that put a you know put a wolf muffler over it and it's a way actually it comes with a muffler actually yeah so yeah and you can, it's brilliant for outdoor recordings. It's just incredible. You can just sit in a round table room, put it in the middle, and it picks up everybody's vocals. Once you fix it properly, it picks up everybody's vocals equally. And then it's easy. Download it in a WAV file straight onto your whatever, and you can just edit and produce it. <coughs> amazing. See, I would be, I euros. have one. I have one, and I've been really happy with it. But I'm curious, like, yeah. I would be so afraid that I would just get crappy audio from that like i've i mean i haven't really played with that that much but like no it's really, really good, it's, that it's, good. It's, it's i mean look it's not it's not um it wouldn't be like as quality as say as a roadcaster but it's definitely good enough if you're doing say any outdoor recordings or you're recording people on the road it's perfect for that hmm. it really is especially in a room you know rather than outside it works really well you know but i mean i have, I have someone, a h6 as well i have a i have a client that's a he's he's just trying to he's like literally about to launch and in the come next couple of months he's like a van life guy so right. I feel like that would be man. I'm going to recommend that. Yeah, because that's that seems like yeah, that's perfect. that's that's perfect for that. I mean, look, you know, he's going to be worried. Not going to, you, you know, he's going to pick her up as the months go by, and he's going to get better and better. Yeah, you know, and that's but for a starting thing, it's, huh. it's the reason I like it's because it's all inclusive. You can do everything with it. That's the king. You know, that's the king about it. I don't huh. know, Chris. What do you think? Uh, so I normally recommend equipment to people who are want to start a podcast and you know sit at their desk in their office and record yeah. so like we usually i just you know uh, and um recommend like an atr 2100 hmm. and a little stand just so they have a an actual handheld mic and get it close to their mouth and you know kind of like the three of us are doing right now yeah because the zoom yeah. zoom is good for what it is yeah but putting it between two people that's, that, yeah, that, I was gonna say that had me. That would have me worried that it wouldn't quite be as. Yeah, and in putting it in in a table with three or four people, you can do that. But in my opinion, that's not professional audio. And no, and that's what I'm saying. You wouldn't. It would be a very much a yeah. starter unit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So and and for so many reasons. Trust me, I produced 14 shows for the Forbes Podcast Network back in 2016, and they wanted to buy a microphone for each host. And guess which mic they ended up buying and shipping to each host. Oh, the, this is going to hurt me. What is it? And and guess which mic that – and this microphone is when there was two co-hosts or they were in a room in a in a conference room with a host and two guests. They would put one mic in the middle oh. of the table. Was it a Blue Yeti? 
is a Blue Yeti. <laughs> oh, jeez. And let me tell you something. <clears throat> that, if you ever want to get good at post-production, I mean, gain a lot of skills, do that. Record three or four people <laughs> around a table with one Blue Yeti and then try to try to make it sound professional. I dare you. <laughs> anyway, yeah. so I normally suggest a handheld mic that can be in people's faces. So it's usually an ATR 2100. But here's uh, the thing, it, like, you, yeah. sorry, Chris. You, uh, yeah, I mean, look, you, you can get an SM58 clone, you know, something that costs you 50 bucks, like it's made from different companies. And that's going to be 10 times better. You're better off spending that money. You know, you can get a box of three for about 40 euros here in Ireland. Uh, they're an SM58 clone. They're pretty well put together, you know, and they, they do the job. And if you get if you bought two boxes of them for 60 bucks, you know, that's six people, as you say, with a mic right up to their, you know, and they're going to get a much better quality than one or two Yeti mics sitting in the middle of the table. That's, I mean, that costs you a lot less than buying even one, you know, Blue Yeti. So, well, see, that's why I always... always that's why I always say, like, you, it really, it really matters what you buy because if you know what you're talking about, I mean, you can spend the same amount of money and get just astronomically better quality. I've had clients that are like, "Oh, don't worry, I already bought a mic," and I'm like, "Why did you hire me? Like, why did you not even ask me before you bought some audio equipment?" And so, yeah, I personally, I actually, so I, I was, I was actually kind of going for like maybe a little bit more. Like high, uh, like the maybe yeah. the level above what you two are talking about. Um, yeah. My go-to is the uh, PD seventy. Um, who even makes that? I don't even remember. Um, but it's it's a really solid dynamic mic. Uh, let me see, Presonus. Presonus. Um, oh yeah. yeah, we don't get that here in Ireland. We can't get that brand here in Ireland. Oh really? That's good to know. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, but I that's kind of my go-to. That and bucks. like a that an arm and and. Uh, like a scarlet is my like that's like I want to be professional I want to sound professional but I don't want to spend a ton of money to start out kind of yeah yeah but. I agree yeah no I mean as I said you know your 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 H1 would be a very very star I mean somebody with zero yeah. budget you know that's yeah. like and you you know unfortunately there are a lot of people out there who you know have a lot of good idea good content and their you know their sound quality is terrible and even if they just invested in something like that and you know did it at a desk yeah. You know, with a couple of books on a small stand right up to their mouth, they're gonna get a better, you know, quality. Yeah, they're using like AirPods or something. Yeah, instead. exactly. Yeah, oh, that's the worst one, isn't it? Yeah, people are people using laptops, microphones. They're actually just standing over. That's over the one that gets me. I, I've actually heard. I've heard really weirdly good quality from AirPods before, but the right. one that I that just never works is just sitting in front of a laptop. Why anyone thinks that is a good idea? baffles no. me it's just and it's yeah. funny because we did a podcast once with a girl who had a laptop and the noise off it obviously the, it was really the fan, was working yeah. over time and every couple of minutes it's, it sounded i said to her are you near an airport or something because the fan would kick in and it just go Whoosh, and here i am oh, the editing i had to do to get that <laughs> out i swear to god it was the most difficult 15 minute interview i've ever done i think i spent six hours on it just wow. meticulously trying to kill it yeah. eventually i did it was going into every frequency down it goes down it goes so yeah they can't you know uh, quality is still is still important i think it's not just i mean i think it's more important than ever because you're competing with the the highest people on the yeah. charts now like you're yeah, getting definitely. listed next to like the top 10 podcasts you know if someone subscribes to 10 podcasts like think of who you're next to like you need to you really need to boost your quality or else no one's going to want to listen to that. It's hard for me to listen to when I have someone that just doesn't have, you know, decent quality on their audio. Audio specifically, I could get by with worse quality video. Like, it's the audio really gets me. Maybe it's just because I'm mm. an audio guy. But No, know. no. Audio is, well, there's, there's the famous uh, Steven Spielberg quote, right? Audio is half the picture. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. So, and in... What we do, audio is even more. It's more than ha half. Yeah. It's more important than that. Yeah. Yep. But I, you right. know, another thing with microphones and stuff too is, um, one, you know, you can have a great microphone and still not sound the best because you have terrible oh, microphone yeah. technique. Mic technique. Like, yeah. You know, like moving around and over here, I'm over here and I'm banging. Crap you say on that, my look, I'm I'm literally and... playing with like a fidget toy on my fingers as you're as you're <laughs> saying that. Like I've the, I'm like a, such a hypocrite. 
that's the worst thing about when people use the laptop microphone. Oh yeah. They always decide that to take that opportunity. Well, let me take when some notes. <laughs> when they're recording audio <laughs> through their laptop, they take that opportunity to start cleaning up their desk, bumping yep. shit around. Uh, yeah. Here's the best one. Wiping the dust off your computer. I had a guy once. All of a sudden, I heard. I'm like, whoa! What do you? What? What? Did you hear that? What was that? He's like, oh no, I didn't hear anything. Yeah, of and I was like, you did You're you just wipe the headphones. dust off your computer? He goes, yeah. I said, uh, don't do that. <laughs> or you hear the best is when they're on the laptop and you hear the. <laughs> you know what I mean? You hear the you hear the typing. It's just yeah. Uh... That's it. Actually, I, I it always takes me maybe five episodes or so, three to five, mm. with a new client where I'm like, okay, what? Don't do that. Don't record where you recorded. That was bad. Don't do the things you did. That was bad. Like I, it takes a minute to get like someone in the. And in fact, I actually have a, a little form that I send to clients that I'm like, when you have someone on your podcast, send them this. If they're not like a frequent podcast guest, send them no this list list of like. Yeah. Make sure you're not doing this. Make sure you're not doing this. Have a drink of water before you start so you don't get the mouth noise. Like I'm like editing in way in advance before they're yeah, even yeah. recording, you know. And it's that it makes a big difference. People kind of are like, "Oh, this is serious." And they really yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. they take it more so, seriously. Barry, uh Barry's here. Barry, have you ever recorded have you ever experienced recording a podcast um where the client was using their laptop mic and they were typing? Have you ever done that? Yeah. Oh, wow. Forget it. <laughs> awful. He ends it with awful. Awful. <laughs> senseless. Yeah. It's just senseless. 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 So we're uh <coughs> we're actually circling the field here, ready to come in for a landing. I kind of wanted to stop after mm -hmm. 90 minutes because sure. for those watching live, which there's one, uh starting in 4 minutes is this great channel that I love watching. It's called America's Untold Stories. Wow. And every Friday they do a free form Friday. So it's the two hosts, Eric and Eric Hunley and Mark Grobert. And they just talk about, you know, various uh, America's untold story, you know, stories from America like or like the stuff. news. It's good stuff. It's it's really <laughs> insightful, really good. Um, so America's untold stories. They're on YouTube and Rumble. They have a locals community as well. And so uh, after you're done watching this um we can go watch them because they're they're great guys. But um, this has been this has been a lot of fun. Um, I love this, and thanks for everyone uh, watching. Um, Cody and Ken, why don't you each give us uh, give us uh, a little bit more information of what you're going to be up to in the near future? Yeah, for sure. Oh, I'll, yeah. I, oh I guess I'll I guess I'll go first um, again mm -hmm. alphabetically. This is alphabetical. <laughs> um, so I I uh, like I said I'm going to be doing. Um, more stuff on YouTube. Um, I'm trying to get some tutorials started up for those people that are like wanting to get into podcast editing and production as like a career, like kind of like you are, Chris. Um, and I think it's it's one of those things where there's a lot of information out there, um, and I'm I'm zeroing in on Descript specifically because I think it's a really good like beginner tool. So if you don't know anything about podcast production, you can still start like a career, get involved and it won't be too difficult for you. So you can find uh, my website. Um, you can go to CodyCrab.com or crab.media, either one of those works. And uh, there's a, you can also download Descript. Uh, I, have a, I have a promo link that you can use. Uh, it's just CodyCrab.com slash Descript. And you can try it out and see what you think. Um, and then uh, my YouTube channel is Cody Crab Edits. You can find me on there. And one last quick thing. We also, like I said, we started a podcast. Me and another guy, Johnny Flores. We saw like a lot of stuff that was geared toward the actual day-to-day, -day, like making stuff and doing stuff. But like, how do you get clients? How do you find, you know, how much should you charge? Like the, the basic career stuff, freelancing type stuff. Um, there wasn't a lot of that type of information that that was really geared toward kind of your day to day. Like a lot of people that I would talk to really wanted someone that advice from someone who's doing this day to day. So um, I we started this podcast. It's called the Podcast Producer Survival Handbook. Uh, trailers live. We're gonna launch a few episodes in the next few weeks. So keep out, keep an eye out for that. And thank you for my very long piece, Ken. It's your turn. I I took so much time. <laughs> oh no, it's great. It's Thanks. okay. Yeah, well, I suppose um, for me, um, I'm on a break at the moment for a few weeks. Uh, April 3rd is the beginning of season four of The Comfortable Spot. 
Um, I have everybody recorded bar one, so that's grand. I can sit back and just load out every Monday. And uh, we're also I'm also doing a, a podcast, which is very exciting for everybody here in Ireland. We're doing it for the government here, the Department of Foreign Affairs in Ireland have asked us to I work for an, an organization which is a nonprofit called the European Network. It's a media platform that kind of helps aspiring journalists and so on. So we're doing a podcast uh, to celebrate 50 years of Ireland in the European Union. Um, it's a huge, big deal here in Ireland. It's a big thing. Uh, I suppose it'd be similar, it would be 50 years of, say, you know, in the United States as a, as a state in the US. So it's that mm. kind of that kind of level of celebration. So we've been asked to do a podcast. Um, we we are we done a few articles last year on the topic because it's kind of they, they applied in 72 and then they got the est in 73. So you can legally have the celebration for two years. So um, we had about <laughs> eight articles. Yes, that's Europe for you. We always give you a little push. Anyway, um, so we do we did about eight articles. And those people who wrote the articles are pretty well known thinkers, you know, academics and so on. So the podcast will be us interviewing them about the article that they wrote. So it's 30 minutes, very snappy, very quick. And uh, we're looking forward to doing that. We should have it finished by May. And then, uh, you know, I've got my daughter's podcast. Please, if you're out there, have a little listen to it. They're all roughly about 10 minutes long. Um, quick uh, review of kids books. Lydia's Booktastic podcast is the one. And you'll find her on Twitter and, of course, on the major platforms or wherever you choose to download your podcasts. Very nice. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, Ken and Cody, de definitely, because uh, I forgot to do this in advance, send me send me the list of everything you just saw. Yeah, of course. sure. Yeah with the links and I'll actually put it in the YouTube show notes. Cool. Great. So everyone watching can just go in the show notes and click through links to everything that you guys just said. Awesome. Um, yeah, I'm actually well, starting can... a new, the next cohort of podcast engineering school is starting on April 4th, which is awesome. Mm. And I'm planning a new show, which I'm not divulging yet. So you're going to uh, do it. Uh, yeah, it's it's, 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 it's it's either about the Yetis or dinosaurs or something like that. that it's, it, it's about <laughs> podcast production. Oh, oh. whoa. And competition. <laughs> Coming out of your comfort zone. <laughs> no, I'm going to cool. leave that tension right there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not divulging it yet. Oh, that's so, cool. uh, but it's going to be exciting. And look, thanks for watching. Thank you for listening. Well, we're not putting this out as an audio podcast, although... Someday we could, but anyway, thanks for watching. If you ever have any questions, contact me, contact us. If you, if anybody you, wants to be, you know, on the lounge with us, let us know. We're just here hanging out. Hopefully, we'll be able to. I know, I know, I have another one scheduled for two weeks from now. It's at a different time, and I'll tell you guys after. But it's at a different time because I lined up some other guests. It's going to be earlier, but anyway, you'll see it, and because we have a Twitter. No, we don't have a Twitter account. Um, I actually had Pod Lounge as a Twitter handle you, th two, three years ago, and I, I gave it up, and someone already took it. Oh. I was going to get it back, but anyway. But that's it. <laughs> so thanks. Um, if we can be of any more help, let us know. And, uh, and, well, you know how we end these things. So there's one last thing I want to tell you guys. It's really important. It's how you can make a lot more money with your podcast. It's very easy. A lot more money very soon. All you have to do is...